Hello everyone, this is Matt from Tracy and Matt.co.uk and here we are looking at the BlackBerry Z10. Doing a quick unboxing video for you and a tour around the device and then we're going to go away and do our review. So, immediately on top we have the handset, which we will of course come back to in a moment. Also in the box we have the getting started guide and uh, uh, what's that, the regulatory information there's a wired headset which we'll just unpack a little bit more closely looks like quite a good headset actually so it's a uh, flat cable one four pole three and a half mil jack there's a clip for clipping onto clothing and indeed for keeping the cable nice and tidy, that's quite a nice idea there's an inline microphone with a push button. Uh, push button is for answering and hanging up your calls. Then there are some in-ear style headphones uh, or earphones with the little tabs on the side. They also help keep them in place in your ear. And we have some other earbuds with it as well for different sizes. So that's quite cool. Also in the box we have a charger, UK 3 pin. I'm going to unpack it because it's just a USB charger, it's got a USB socket on the top and then finally we have a USB to micro USB sync and charge cable so that's everything in a box, we'll uh, now take a look at the phone itself so uh, firstly we have a 5 inch display uh, it is uh, 720 by 1280 pixels um, so it is a 720p display so it's quite a reasonable size or generous size at 5 inch and uh, it is super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen. Uh, in terms of uh, other stuff around the outside um, on the left hand side we have a um, HDMI output or well, micro HDMI I believe that is and then the USB sync charge connector. On the bottom really nothing to see there's a uh, looks like a bit of a loudspeaker area there and uh, uh, we're looking at there's a hole there for the microphone and up on the uh, right hand side uh, another two microphone holes by the looks of it up and down volume control and a middle button there it's like a menu kind of uh, action button looking around to the top we have the power button and the headphone socket there it's a three and a half mil headphone socket for in using the headphones or headset that comes with it or indeed the uh, uh, your own headphones. On the back we have an 8 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash and uh, the secondary camera on the front is a 2 megapixel. Um, both are capable of uh, HD video recording. Just trying to remove the back which is, there we go, it's quite secure so therefore quite difficult to remove but the back pops off and as you can see it's this really nice carbon fibre um, back cover um, and it looks quite smart, it's even sort of like carbon fibre on the inside. Um, it's quite secure as well, it's quite rigid and uh, it's got some you know, the middle bit inside. Uh, inside uh, there's no removable battery but obviously the battery is inside um, and it is a there we go 2880 milliamp hour battery. That's a really hefty battery capacity actually for, um, for a device like this. Um, it's pretty impressive um, and it's similar, it's on par with say the um, HTC One Max in terms of the battery capacity with slightly smaller um, screen and it's uh, Super AMOLED as well so um, battery life w we would expect to be um, pretty impressive on here with the uh, Super AMOLED um, screen. There's a slot here for the micro SD AC memory card which will support up to 64 gig uh, memory cards and also the SIM card slot which is obviously a micro SIM um, poking in the side there as well. So that's really all to see underneath. We'll pop the back cover back on like so and it all snaps into place all the way around and once it's in place it is really sturdy. I'm just going to peel the back cover off. So it's worth mentioning that the back um, has got like almost like a rubberized texture to it or uh, like a coating I guess so it's quite um, Almost sticky. I mean, it's not sticky as in terms of like you know a residue, but that means that it does sort of like hold uh, sit in your hand quite well, and uh, means that it doesn't sort of slide around so much. It's 
um, easier to kind of keep hold of, which is uh, quite a good idea really. Um, sitting on a surface means that it just doesn't move around so much. So um, that's quite good uh, in terms of the actual sort of finish. We'll just power up. And while I power up, let me run down the rest of the spec. We've got 141 millimeters from top to bottom, uh, 72 millimeters wide, and 9.4 at the thickest point. Um, it's quite large, um, but it's the sort of design and the fact that it's got very nicely curved edges means it doesn't feel too chunky in your hand. And uh, although it's uh, 170 grams, it doesn't feel that heavy. Again, uh, a lot can be done with sort of design and styling of a handset to make it feel um, and seem lighter and smaller uh, in your hand than, than obviously the actual specs and uh, physical dimensions would suggest. As we've already mentioned, the 720p display, 720 by 1280 pixels, is super AMOLED, multi-touch multi capacitive touchscreen, um, and uh, being super AMOLED, it should, in theory, uh, have a lower power consumption than, say, an LCD display, um, such as on the Z10, and with that larger battery, we'd expect to see a bit better uh, battery life. Incidentally, this is a slightly lower resolution display than the BlackBerry Z10, um, the Z10 has a 768 by 1280 whereas this is 720 by 1280 um, and indeed the uh, Z10 has a 4.2 versus this is the 5. Um, Z10 has LCD and this is Super AMOLED so it's just a few little bits of comparison there. In terms of internal memory we've got 16 gig of onboard storage uh, coupled with 2 gigabytes of RAM and processor wise we have a dual core 1.7 uh, gigahertz processor which is a, a crate processor. Um, we've mentioned the HDMI output, that's a quite a nice feature to have. Not too many handsets actually have uh, HDMI outputs, but uh, um, it's pretty good that it's got that, particularly if you're doing sort of uh, presentations and features, um, and obviously sharing video and that kind of stuff, so it's quite a, quite a cool idea. 8 megapixel autofocus camera on the back, we've already mentioned, but uh, as I say, it does do full HD video recording uh, at 30 frames a second, and it also supports geotagging with the internal GPS. Uh, which is GPS assisted GPS with GLONASS support. Uh, we've also got Bluetooth 4.0 with uh, A2DP and LE support and Wi-Fi supporting A0211 uh, ABG and N standards, no AC at the moment. Uh, Wi-Fi Direct and Wi-Fi Hotspot modes are also supported. I think that pretty much covers uh, most of the sort of basic specification. Um, so let's go and take a look at the uh, Operating system, which we are running 10.2, uh, Android OS, uh, uh, sorry, um, BlackBerry OS 10.2. So um, we will swipe left to continue, and we will skip without uh, obviously using SIM card, which we haven't installed. And uh, it's going to scan around for a Wi-Fi network, which hopefully it's going to find one in just a moment because there's one about two feet away from me. And uh, we'll go ahead and connect. So there we go. We can connect to this one. Incidentally, I do like the keyboard on uh, on BlackBerry uh, on touch screen because it is uh, four or five rows, but it does have the numeric keys um, on the line above the QWERTY, which means that you don't have to keep going on shift, you know, in in and out of number modes um, to actually sort of get to the number keys, which obviously you do with, um, say, uh, the iPhone. So let's wait for this to just connect. Okay, so we're connected. We're going to have to just select and can agree to this in just a moment. Uh, well, we'll just agree. Uh, we're going to skip that for a moment and disable the diagnostic information. And I'm asking to customize for our region. Hopefully, it's not going to take too long to get ourselves set up. We are running an update. Obviously physically it's a little bit smaller than the BlackBerry Z10, which unfortunately I don't have one to hand to for a size comparison, but we are a bit bigger than a BlackBerry Z10. And we'll continue. We've done all this before, so... There we go. It's going to tell us about all the gestures, which obviously we've already done before. Okay, there we go. That's it. 
There we go. And we can get rid of that. And get rid of the tutorials. Okay, so we are finally into the OS, which obviously is almost exactly the same as the original BlackBerry 10 um, OS as on the Z10. There are a few feature differences. Um, we won't go into those just at the moment, but let's just take a look around. So we've got the BlackBerry Hub and Contacts, BlackBerry App World, sliding across this side we can set up the BlackBerry Hub, um, which obviously I haven't added any accounts to this just at the moment, but in terms of the accounts that we can add, obviously you can add email accounts, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Evernote, and um, calendars, but um, we will just skip out of that just for the moment. Um, so uh, all of our accounts will be shown in here, email with attachments, we could search, we can compose, um, we would also have our BBM messages displayed here and so on. It basically consolidates all of your uh, messages and accounts um, into one place. Um, so going back, um, which I will do, there we go. So um, apps that are installed are here. It's obviously still going through this uh, thing of telling us what to do. Okay, um, satisfy it. Okay, so we've got um, some installed applications. Never know, it's part of the OS, which is uh, for those that use it, it's pretty cool. We've got smart tags, um, settings, um, there's weather, which we're going to take a quick look at. So turn on location surfaces. Uh, yeah, no, don't. don't those okay so that's given us our location and weather it seems to be such a fascination with weather on on mobiles but uh, there we go just keeps telling us uh, there we go so um, these are the running applications and uh, as I start more which I'm going to do in a moment so we're going to text messages close that one um, have music nothing installed and um, let's go to YouTube let's wipe up from the bottom as you can see here these running applications are shown in uh, the most well, recent window so I can close the browser close music and I can close weather and it is I can close accounts now that tab has also disappeared rather than showing you a blank tab so that's quite cool so we're going to quickly pop into um, YouTube and uh, let's do a quick search for incidentally that's a slightly irritating having just mentioned that the keyboard has the four rows because now it's down to just the three but anyway I'm sure that's something that we can configure so let's take a quick look at a video So we can see full screen if we switch around. Turn the, volume. Just turn the volume down a bit so that we are not talking over ourselves. So good little video. Look, almost like it's there. Um, so if uh, video works quite well, obviously it didn't take too long to actually buffer and play that, but we are using um, Wi-Fi. There's a bit of a lag on the rotate, but nothing too too terrible, we'll go ahead and close that. So video playback is quite good. So you've got BBM Messenger there that requires configuration, so I'm not going to pop into there just at the moment. Let's take a look at the browser and see what that performs like. So we go to our site. Certainly it's offering as a suggestion. Cool. So there we go, it's loaded pretty quickly, mobile version of uh, of the site, all laid out in column format, but loading pretty quickly. Um, quality wise, the text's uh, quite easy to read, there is a certain degree of, um, well, almost fuzziness uh, to the anti-aliasing on there, I mean it's fine, but it just makes it look a bit more grey than black um, on the text, but uh, Nevertheless, it still is nice and clear and easy to read. So that works quite well. And obviously we can switch around to landscape mode. And obviously everything laid out slightly different into two column when we go into landscape as well. And the 
and so there was a slight delay in the rotate but nothing too too uh, too bad at all uh, back into here so we can drop down the top we can turn the rotation lock on we can go into the settings turn on Bluetooth on and off go into the Wi-Fi settings alarm and uh, obviously notifications as well um, swapping that up out of the way furthermore we've got obviously the camera so let's just take a quick look at the camera and there we go <sighs> pop something in the way just so that we can take a quick picture so, tapping on the screen allows us to take the picture um, not sure if the buttons also function as a Okay, the volume up button does allow us to take a shot. And then we've got the different cameras. So we can switch the camera around to forward facing. And so you switch it back. There are different settings for normal shooting mode, scene selection, flash on and off, and all the different uh, aspect ratios as well. That's what out of the way. In terms of what we've captured. Quality boys, not too bad. Um, again, as I've mentioned several times before, and obviously it's not going to convey quite so well on the video, but it will do when we come to the review. Um, well, that one's a bit blurred. I think that's because we've moved slightly. But um, one kind of complaint I have of, well, frankly, almost every manufacturer, handset manufacturer, and uh, phone camera is the amount of compression. JPEG compression that is placed upon the cameras, the amount of noise in these images for because of JPEG compression um, is quite surprising. I wish you were, there was a setting to actually change that you could say how much compression you are happy to accept both uh, the trade-off in terms of file size and obviously the amount of compression noise. Sadly that's not there and that's not just a criticism of BlackBerry um, that's pretty much universal and I know some handset manufacturers are much more aggressive when it comes to compression of, um, of images than, than others and so I wish there was a setting that we could actually alter that to say I want to minimize my compression I'm happy to uh, accept much larger file sizes in the trade-off but anyway I digress uh, so in terms of other stuff installed I've got the BlackBerry app world Twitter and Facebook clients are there um, connect to Dropbox uh, which we can obviously do. Settings menu, uh, as you can see there, everything's in black. Um, realistically, um, if all of these um, menus and um, the actual back backdrop and screen uh, were dark or even black, then certainly with an AMOLED display or Super AMOLED display, uh, we could expect to see um, a bit of a longer battery life, um, certainly when it comes to doing things like mail and in the hub. Um, if that was black, uh, black background with white text, um, certainly the uh, expectation would, would be that there would be uh, better battery performance because of the way Super AMOLED or AMOLED displays um, do indeed work. Um, but I think uh, that pretty much covers uh, most of the sort of basic bits and pieces on the BlackBerry Z30. Uh, we will have a full review for you over the next few weeks. I must say a special thanks to our friends over at unlockedmobiles.com. The uh, URL will be alongside the video and indeed in the title of the video. Um, but thanks for uh, to unlockedmobiles.com for actually sending over our uh, review BlackBerry. We'll have some more reviews for the guys over at uh, unlockedmobiles.com um, over the coming weeks as well, as hopefully we will be working with them a little bit more closely. But they do indeed have the Z30 on uh, their site available to buy just at the moment and obviously it is a, indeed unlocked version um, in the meantime if you want to follow us on twitter it's twitter.com slash tracy and matt or facebook.com slash tracy and uk i'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracy and matt uk but for now thanks for watching